Hi, my name is Arun Nair and in this video series, I will give you a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to install IB Flexi Capture 12 distributed version in a large-scale enterprise environment. This video assumes that you have the license key for IB Flexi Capture 12 distributed version. If you don't have one, please contact your IB salesperson. All right, before we get started with the installation process, let me give you a brief overview of IB Flexi Capture architecture, the system requirements, and the infrastructure that I'm going to set up today. Let's start with the architecture. IB Flexi Capture is not a single application. It is a group of components or a suite of applications that work together to extract data from documents. These components are broadly categorized into two, server components and client components, or in Abby's terminology, they are called station components. There are five server components and 10 station components. Out of these 10 station components, the first six items are desktop applications that you need to install on the computers, whereas the last four items, which are administration monitoring console, web capture station, web scanning station, and web data verification station are all web applications that you can access through a browser. You may not need all these components all the time. Depending on your use case, you may skip installing some of them. For example, scanning station is primarily used when you have a scanner and a dedicated operator who does all the scanning work. However, if you're going to get the PDF files directly through email, or if it is going to be available in a shared folder, then you don't really need a scanning station. Similarly, Flexi Layout Studio and Form Designer are purely developer tools, and you don't need to install them in a production environment. In other words, it's not recommended to install these in the production environment. Now let's take a look at the system requirements. In this slide, you can see the hardware and OS requirements for the servers and stations. You can also find the system requirements by going to the link https colon slash slash abby.com slash flexicapture slash specifications, which will be the most updated one. While all these are pretty clear and self-explanatory, you need to bear in mind that these are the minimum requirements and your production environment may need much higher specifications depending on the volumes you intend to process. Apart from the hardware and operating system requirements, there are a few additional dependencies which I have listed here in this slide. I would like to point out one information here. Although the system requirements on Abbey site says .NET Framework 4.5, I found that when installing the latest version, which as of today is released to update 10, the installation fails stating that the .NET Framework 4.6 is required. So make sure you download and install .NET Framework 4.6. For database server, you have three options. You can either use a Microsoft SQL Server, any of these versions, or Oracle Database 12C or 18C. Or if you want to go for a complete cloud database, you can use Microsoft Azure SQL, which is basically a PaaS, Platform as a Service, which is offered by Microsoft Azure. If you're using Microsoft SQL Server, then mixed authentication mode must be enabled. In this tutorial, I'll be using Microsoft SQL Server 2012 Service Pack 4. You also need to have a database account with the relevant permissions. For Microsoft SQL Server, you can either use a SQL Server account or a Windows authentication account, but it should have DB Creator and Security Admin Access. Now, you might be wondering why we need the Security Admin Access. Well, hold that thought right now. I'll explain that in the next video when we set up the application server. In addition to this, you need two Active Directory service accounts, one for processing station and one for processing server. Then you have these additional requirements which are also given on Abby's website. We'll go through some of these during the installation process like checking the .NET Framework version, installing Visual C++ 2015 redistributable, enabling IAS, etc. Okay, now let's take a look at my infrastructure which I've set up to install Abby Flexi Capture. I have a total of 8 VMs with 5 of them running Windows Server 2012 R2 and 3 of them running Windows 10. All the machines are in the same physical network, same subnet, and same domain called busyping.net. I have installed SQL Server 2012 Service Pack 4 on this machine, which will be my database server. And I'll be using my application server itself as my file server. You may opt to use a separate server for file storage, but Abby strongly recommends to have the file storage in the application server itself because the speed of communication between the application server and the file storage greatly affects the overall performance of FlexiCapture. I use the rest of the three servers to run Processing Server, Licensing Server, and Processing Station. Then for the three Windows 10 machines, I'll use one for Project Setup Station, one for Verification Station, 
and the last one for developer tools, which are Flexi Layout Studio and Form Designer. I've also mentioned the various TCP port numbers that should be opened on each server. All right, so let's go ahead and download the setup file for Abbey Flexi Capture Distributed. Go to the site www.abbeydownloads.com slash fc12. And under Flexi Capture 12 Distributed, you should see the set of files as two RAR files. Go ahead and download them both and extract them using any of the free tools like 7-Zip. Make sure you download this to one of the server machines and then share this folder so that you can access it from the other machines as well because we will use the same set of file to install all the components. I have already downloaded and extracted them on the server which I'm going to use as my application server. And I have already shared this folder as you can see here. Finally, I have created two service accounts, one for processing station and one for processing server. And I've also added my Windows account into the SQL server with the server roles, DB creator and security admin. All right, so from the next video, we will see how to install each of these components.